I'm going to open up the Honeypot Drupal page. I'm gonna do a search for Drupal Honeypot, and it's this first entry here. So this provides some additional information. You can see that it's fairly extensively used, about 4,000 users. And here's the information that you need to install it. I'm going to use Drush. So I'll type in Drush, DL for download, Honeypot, and let's go ahead and enable it. So I'll do Drush in Honeypot. We'll type Y, and now we should have it. So I'm going to jump back to my site and go to the modules listings page just to make sure we have it enabled, Honeypot. Okay, there it is. And now let's go to configure. So our first option is to protect all forms with Honeypot. Now if you have a lot of public facing forms, this could be a really good idea. It makes it so you don't accidentally forget to enable it in one of your forms. For now, we know the specific forms that we're going to target, and Honeypot will add a little bit of overhead to the processing of the forms that it's enabled at. So if we don't need it everywhere, it doesn't make sense to check it. So we can log blocked form submissions, which can be helpful in trying to track down where the sources of our spam are. We're gonna leave this unchecked for now. We can change this Honeypot element name. The idea is to put in something that seems like it would make sense in most forms. URL is innocuous enough that it will probably be okay. The issue would come about if there's already a form element called URL in a form, this could conflict with it. So we wanna make sure that this name is unique, but also that it makes sense. We'll go ahead and leave this at URL for now. The time gate method I talked about is what we set here. We can set this to zero to disable it, and it's important to note that page caching will be disabled if there's a form being protected by this time limit. Again, this is the time gate method I talked about earlier, and because it's storing information about the time that the form was created inside of the form, it's important for the form not to be cached. So it skips the caching process if Honeypot is enabled, and the time gate is enabled as well. So this could be a good reason not to enable it on all forms by default. I'll scroll down. And now the two forms that we want to enable this on are our user registration form and then our blog entry comment form. And then we'll click save configuration. Okay, so now if we jump back to the browser where we're an anonymous user and we refresh, and we look at the source code for the form, I'm just gonna select an item within the Form and select inspect element with Firebug. I'm in Firefox right now. You see if we scroll down and look at the different elements, we have our body here, we have our captcha, and then right here we have our URL. And notice that it's disabled. You see URL text field is displayed as none here. If we expand this, it says leave this field blank. So even if a user is using a screen reader and they end up seeing this field, it gives them an indicator that they really shouldn't fill out this particular field. It's gonna be hard to test out our time limit option because we have to fill out this caption and that's gonna take way longer than five seconds. But at some point, if we did wanna test it, we could disable the captcha, run through really quick and fill out the necessary inputs, basically just the comment, and give it a test and see what happens. Now, just like with captcha, Honeypot comes with a permission that we can use in order to allow users to bypass it. Now, because these are invisible, Chances are that our human users aren't going to run into a problem with it, but if they do, we can go ahead and enable that particular permission to help them skip that particular validation.